Well, welcome back, folks. Hopefully this is your a return to the Hillbilly Musings channel. If it is your first time here, check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to take the time to uh, like this video, comment on it, subscribe to it, all that fancy stuff that helps us YouTubers out, uh, fledgling YouTubers like me. Uh, you know, every little bit you do like that really does help us out. You know, I, I say it in jest, but um, in reality... It does help us out a lot when those videos are out there and getting seen. Uh, and it helps us encourage us to do more content like this. So today we're looking at a sea camp. And I'm sure you probably guessed that if you clicked on this video title. But what we're looking at today is a 32 ACP sea camp. This one is a later one. And by that, I assume it's probably manufactured in the last... I don't know, several years, four or five years. But the Sea Camp has an interesting history. <clears throat> uh, the, the founder's name was Ludwig, uh, but he went by Lewis, but Ludwig Wilhelm Sea Camp. He was born in 1901, passed away in 1989. But uh, from the story, and I'm just going to give you the short story here about it, and it actually has the history in the manual, which is a very nice a, a very nice tie-in for a, a, a company like that. But in pre-World War II, he was a master gunsmith that was trained in the technical academy system, whatever that means, of pre-World War II Germany. But uh, that tells me he was probably trained in some, um, oh, being a master gunsmith, probably high areas of quality control, machining, all that good stuff and everything. So you can see that in the Sea Camp today, actually, when you look at the quality of this, which we're going to get to here in a minute. But you can see this is actually... I mean, it, it is kind of a wow factor when you get a chance to actually, and you really have to hold it in your hands to appreciate it. You know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you you're going to, I'm going to be able to show it to you in video here, but we'll do some nice close ups and take a look at it. But yeah, basically, he started the Sea Camp Company in 73, and they used to do some conversions that would convert 1911s to double action, uh, have some double action capabilities. I don't know anything about those. But uh, I do know that I remember para ordnance used to do that back in the day, if I remember right. They were the first ones to bring out some double action capability uh, pistols on the 1911 system. But we all know that um, in 1968, the Gun Control Act limited the importation of nice guns such as this little baby Browning. You know, after 1968, we could no longer import a lot of those small pocketable guns, uh, concealable guns, uh, from overseas. And so that kind of left Americans in a, in a mess for a while. Uh, really, I guess the first guy to really jump into it was the uh, Jennings. Um, I can't remember his first name. The guy that founded Raven Arms. Uh, he was one of the ones that really jump into it and start making these small pocket pistols. And it wasn't really until 1981 that um, Lewis Seacamp came out with the 25 ACP Seacamp, which is the same size as the 32 and the 380. That's an interesting fact about the Sea Camps. They are they're available in three calibers, current being currently being manufactured in two calibers, 3, 32 and 380, but they are all the same physical size. And it really just kind of blows my mind to have a 380 this small. If 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 someone goes to it, I I know I sure wouldn't want to shoot it. Wouldn't be a very fun one. But yeah, they made the 25 ACP. And then I think it was along about, uh, I'm wanting to say it was 1983, I believe, or 85. I think it was 85, actually. They discontinued the 25 and started making the 32s. And that's what we have here today. So we're going to talk more about this as we go into it. But let me just start doing some slow pans of this. And this is, I think, is maybe a, a dealer label. I don't know if that's on all of them. But you can, another thing you can tell, this is a fairly new one, is some of the Southwick address. They have some of the older C camps, which a lot of the collectors do like to collect, that was made at the previous address. And gosh, I can't remember. If you go to C camp forums, they're always talking about those. A nice little box. You can see mine has been opened quite a few times, and so it's starting to tear up a little bit here, but we'll open it up once again. Now, this is interesting. If you guys don't know this, the 32 ACP Seacamp and the 380 
ACPC camps have recommended ammos. And let me tell you, it is actually pretty important, mainly because when uh, when Mr. Seacamp designed this firearm for the 32, he designed it around the silver tip, the Winchester silver tip 32 ACP ammunition. So this gun is so precision made, the ammo has can't be above a certain length for it to function properly. Yeah, crazy, right? But uh, I'm digging around to see if I can find you this little gadget on my workbench here. But I, I but they actually recommend. I think it's point ninety one thousandths of an inch or shorter for the um, for the ammo selection. So this little gadget is something I got on eBay that is actually cut to ninety one thousandths, and you can put your ammo through it to make sure it passes underneath it. And this is a Spear Gold Dot 32 ACP. So, today, Winchester Silver Tip 32 ACPs are just about unobtainium. Uh, you can buy some still on Gun Broker and stuff like that, but I've seen them going for like $150 a box. And we're talking a box of like 50 rounds, probably. But you can still get... There's three ammunition that's still being made that you can actually get for these. One of them is a Spear Gold Dot 32 ACP. The second one is the Federal Hydra Shocks 32 ACP. And you can go to the Seacamp website and they'll give you the, the, the latest list. The last one is uh, the one that a lot of people t t t like to use. And I'll be darned if I can remember the name of it. It's not Fioki. Um, PMC. The 32, uh, 32 ACP PMC ammunition in the jacket and hollow point is the one that seems to be popping up. I think they're doing some actual runs of it nowadays. And you can go to Ammo Seek or some of those other places and find it. But yeah, again, it is critical to use the recommended ammo. And there's been guys that shoot other ammos through it and they work fine, but I, I tend to, I, I do know that it can be ammo picky. Now, I wish I could tell you firsthand experience how picky this one is, but I have never fired this one. Another note, applying even a size pressure of the trigger, blah, blah, blah. Basically what this is telling you is when you take out the magazine, you wanna make sure you have your fingers off the trigger because running inside of the grip, there's a little spring. And it used to be in the day when Larry Seacamp was in charge, which Larry was Lewis's son, um, they would always include an extra spring. And I don't think I don't think I have an extra spring in this one. But yeah, you have to be real careful about that. Now, if you do screw up the spring uh, by messing with the trigger with the magazine out, and then you try to put a magazine in, it bends the spring. It's not too hard to replace it. You just have to pull the grip panel, and then you just pop another little spring in there. It's not too big of a deal. A lot of guys will just bend them back again. But let's take another look at some of the paperwork in here. We've got the limited warranty card. I probably should have sent that in. We've got the manual. And this is actually a nice um, a nice quality manual. It tells a, a good um, a, a good story, the, the good story of Seacamp, you know, why Mr. Seacamp developed this. Uh, it, it tells a story, I believe, of how he was injured in the war in World War II. Um, got shot in the face, lost a couple of teeth, and it was a P-38, he claims, that saved him, the double action capability of the P-38. You know, it has good steps on how to do the field stripping. So this is one of those ones where I do definitely recommend read the manual, folks, because you'll pick up some valuable information in there. And we've got a nice little foam insert, and then we have where the gun is supposed to be. And nothing underneath it but a black zip tie that was around it from the beginning. So I actually have the firearm out, and I wanted to show you this beautiful packaging first, and we will take a look at the Sea Camp itself now. This is it. <clears throat> Let's see if I can zoom in to show you all some of the, get you some better views of this. And you could, you, you really have to hold, again, you really have to hold this pistol to appreciate the uh, the craftsmanship that goes into this.
And you can see that it does have the European style heel latch for the magazine. Again, you want to make sure you keep your finger off the trigger area. But a very nice magazine. Now the magazines, when I first got this, they can be tricky to get, but uh, C Camp happened to get in a batch of the 32, so I do have an extra magazine. I didn't think to bring it down here with me with this video. But it does have really nice, now another indication that this is a later model is the grips have the full texturing on them. I think these are G-Chain grips, but they're really grippy, really aggressive actually. If you were carrying this inner waistband and this was up against your skin, yeah, I mean that would be very irritating after a full day of carrying. But uh, they did switch the grips within the last few years, I believe, to where it's a full texture. The other ones had like a curve running this way. Or maybe it was like this. I can't remember where they had a smooth portion of the grip up above. But yeah, I mean, this is just uh, really, this is just eye candy, folks, uh, w w with the quality of manufacturing that, that you see in this thing. A lot of hand fitting. Let's take a look at the sight picture, see what y'all think. Um, there are no sights. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Um, I remember, well, I don't remember back in the day when the C camps came out, but I remember back in the, uh, gosh, I guess it was around the early 90s, everybody was trying to get a C camp. And boy, that used to be a big ruckus in the old uh, news groups, the, the gun news groups that we used to, was kind of the, the predecessor to the forums and everything that you see online today. Everybody's talking about, oh, I can't believe he made it without sights. I can't believe he made it without sights. Well, if you read the history of it, you can see some reasons behind it. But this is definitely what the late, great Jeff Quinn would call uh, for social situations only. Meaning, uh, it, it is a self-defense of firearm that's primarily designed for self-defense. And if you're close enough to have to use a firearm in that type of situation, you will resort to point and shoot shooting. Now... I'm not going to give my opinion whether or not I agree with that, but I do know I, I do carry this sometimes. Well, I have, you know, I do carry this sometimes, and um, it doesn't bother me that it doesn't have any sights because I know if I pull out this little pea shooter, uh, they're going to be in bad breath distance range. And that's exactly what it's designed for. So yeah, no sights. I mean, that's, again, big uproar. And there still is. People just can't believe that they would make a firearm without any sights on it. But, you know, if you realistically look at it, let's look at the sights on the baby browning compared to it. Yeah, it has sights, but boy, I tell you what, they're tiny. They're a little bitty. Can you, I mean, would you really be able to pick those up and sight with them in an uh, adrenaline pumping situation uh, more than likely not and we're going to do some size comparisons and since we have the little baby browning out let's just take a look at it first you can see that the baby browning does win on the size more and this is a I, i'm just a huge fan of these baby brownings and the subsequent bauer firearms they made a knockoff of this and up until the 80s and then of course um PSA is still making these in 25 ACP. But with that said, I don't consider this to be um, honestly a, a really viable carry because I will not carry this Condition 1. I'm just not comfortable with it, even though I know it was designed to do so and everything else. But uh, for some reason, I just don't want to carry this Condition 1. And those that don't know, Condition 1 means that you have a round chambered and it's ready to fire, all you have to do is thumb off the safety to get it to fire. But still, this is a favorite of mine, the little baby browning. This one, as you can see, does not have a safety anywhere on it. Now they do make a California compliant C camp that does have a safety. And the safety is a little small lever right here on the trigger which basically tells me that it's designed really not to be used, but they have to have a safety option with it. And that's what their, um, that's what their solution was, is to put that small little, it's a little lever that pops up and down on here, it's somewhere on the trigger. It may be on this, on this side possibly, I, I can't remember for sure, I've seen pictures of it. 
But let's take another uh, another size comparison. You know, people talk about how small these are, and I will tell you, I believe I might be mistaken, except for the PSA baby uh, baby Browning clones. I believe this is probably the smallest semi-automatic that's being manufactured currently. Again, that's not including the little PSA baby Browning clones. So let's zoom, I'm gonna take a pan out just a little bit for this next one. This is one that we're all familiar with. This is the Ruger LCP2. Uh, this one is a 380 model to make it in 22 long rifle, the same size. The 22 long rifle does have a safety on it. But this is a really popular uh, carry weapon. This is, uh, you know, probably one of my preferred ones usually uh, that I will usually, you know, you'll, if, if, if I usually have one of these in my pocket or in an ankle holster. But let's take a look at the size comparisons of it. This literally looks like a G19 next to a <laughs> next to an LCP or something like that. I mean, you can see obviously this is much much tinier. Now, it's a 32. It's a six plus one capacity. This is a 380, which is also a six plus one capacity. And you actually have pretty decent sights. That's one thing Ruger did good on the LCP2 when it came out is they actually put some decent sights on it. So let's take another real quick size comparison. And we're close to wrapping this up. If you guys have hung in this long, I appreciate you doing so. This is the Beretta Bobcat. This is the Bobcat 21A. Uh, this is another real popular, uh, well, before the LCP days, these were very popular firearms because they were some of the smaller uh, smaller firearms, you know, smaller firearms that you could have for concealed carry. But to me, today, this feels just kind of clunky. And when you look at it next to the C-Camp, I mean, you can see why. Wider, longer, taller heavier. You can get smaller. We'll bring out one more here. Y'all know I like little North American arms. Well, this is their 22 short model, which in my, I think this is the smallest gun being made that uses readily available ammunition. That's the 22 short model. This is not the standard long rifle it is the 22 short one but you can see obviously that it's it's even much smaller than the secant but you know uh given a situation you have five rounds of 22 short single action meaning you have to cock the hammer every time or you can have seven rounds of 32 acp um pull the trigger and go so in my opinion this does have a niche it does have a niche in today's world, you know, with uh, with uh, the the world of uh, you know of, of LCP twos and and, and Keltec P thirty twos and things along the lines of that. It, it it does have a small niche in today's world. I don't carry it very often. Uh, the, one reason is, is again, like I said, I have not fired it yet, and I normally do not like to carry a weapon that I have not fired. But I have carried this just for the fun of it. But I will say that, uh, yeah, I really do think they, they do have a notch in today's world. This, if it was loaded, you would be able to see the base of the cartridge right here. Kind of like a loaded chamber indicator. So that's it, folks. The C-Camp. And again, let me remind you that the 380 ACP version of this, same magazine capacity, is the same physical size of this weapon. Tiny, 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 380. Y'all let me know if you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll try to do my best to answer them. And again, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Y'all have a good day.